everybody. I am so excited for our Lunch and Learn today. We are here to talk about gratitude in a mentoring relationship and really how we can be grateful and express gratitude and receive gratitude in a mentoring relationship. You might think this, uh, this is an odd topic because you might think to yourself, well, of course my mentor knows that I'm grateful or of course my people know that I'm grateful for them and the hard work that they put in. But do they? I don't know. Some people have different love languages and by that I just mean the way they want to receive gratitude or the recognition is different and um, it can be used in many different scenarios. And so what we're here to talk about is how we can leverage gratitude to be our best selves in a mentor relationship. We've got our awesome guest speaker here, Laura Leeton. She is an expert on this topic. She is the founder of um, Anchored Elements Coaching and Training. Laura's coaching philosophy is anchored in, clar in uh, clarity, effectiveness, sales, growth, and compassion. Laura is fantastic. She's a wealth of information on the power of gratitude. She's got a ton of really great stories about how gratitude can change the way not only we work or and the people we work with, but really how they feel about work and their, their ability to buy into the culture of the company. Laura, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. So let's talk about gratitude for a second. Why is gratitude even important? Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, I can tell you why it's important to me, um, and I'll share a story with you that I have. Um, well, it's all based in that. So uh, I was in corporate for about 25 years, and um, about a year and a half ago, started my own company. But about five years ago, I was working with, uh, our company had just gone through a reorg. I was with a Fortune 500 company, and um, I've been working with a brand new VP. I was a regional director at the time and we sat down to do an annual review. I can remember it as clear as day. And I was at the top of my career at that point, right? Um, getting ready probably to be promoted again, uh, regional director of the year for three years in a row. Um, I just, I felt like I had it all. Okay. And we sat down and she looked at me and she said, uh, do you trust me? And I was kind of like, I don't know how I like, I don't know if I like that question very much before an annual review. Because I'm like, what's going to follow this, right? And then she said to me, um, you know, it's about time you act like you belong here. And it was like, bam, it hit me like a ton of bricks. My ego was shot at that point. And, um, but after a little bit, I thought to myself, she, she's right. She's right. I, uh, I was doing all the right things. You know, I was hiring the right people and performance and, and productivity and you name it. Um, but who I was being wasn't matching that. And so basic, basically she was like, you know, you come to these big meetings with, with all of the C-suite and, and, and important meetings where you have a voice and you don't speak up. And I thought, I know, I was, I was too afraid to speak up. What if I said something stupid? What if I wasn't enough? Um, it was this imposter type thing going on. And um, she changed the paradigm. I had the biggest paradigm shift as a leader. But what she said to me was, look, we're going to work on this together. And I'm thinking, no one had ever done that. I have had amazing leaders, too. I venture to say some of the best mentors I've ever had in my career. I've had some great ones. But it was always about what I had to do. Do this, do that. You have a new process, a new system. You have a bigger team, you know, whatever it may be. No one had ever stopped me and said, let me help you figure out who you get to be to really show up and have more influence with your people. And so she did that. She was a mentor. We'd go to meetings. She'd go, how do you want to show up? I said, I want confident, fluid, articulate, courageous. And she, we would speak that contract almost. And I would speak up. I'll never forget in one meeting, I was sweating and shaking. And I stood up and I started speaking and I sat down and I kind of looked over at her at the side of her eye and she winked her eye and she's like, you did it. And that's all I needed. Just who I was going to be because I had all the rest. And so why do I say that that is the uh, catalyst to my gratefulness? Because I would not be as authentic as I am now, as free as I am now, as influential as I am now, courageous, I can keep going confident as I am now, without her stepping in. I asked her, I said, why did you do that? She goes, I took a risk. Because I, I could have told you you need to act like you belong, or you could have got pissed at me. 
and just said, screw you. Because we didn't, a year maybe we had worked together. But she goes, I knew it was worth it. And she took a risk. And now I step in her, I walk in her same footsteps now. For anybody that I mentor or anybody that I coach. Um, and I walked into it with the gratitude of what she did for me to really shift who I am as a leader. So. That's a really fascinating story. I think it's really powerful because we've got a lot of leaders watching this Lunch and Learn right now. And I would imagine that some of them have a lot of team players on their team that are, they're doing good. They were in a similar scenario as you were, where they're like hitting their numbers and you know, they're doing just good enough. But when it comes to like taking it up and over the top, because you know that they've got potential, they're not fully hitting it there. And I would imagine that a lot of our leaders probably would say, you know what, I'll take what I'm getting. I, I don't want to, I don't want to lose a great person. Is there, a, do you have a suggestion or a, methodology that you follow for knowing when is the right time to challenge your people to do more like when are you going to trust me is the question your leader asked you is there something that you would suggest to our leaders that are watching this right now to see if there's a way that they can unlock their team members to go from great contributor to incredible contributor great question and i'm going to first say that it starts with me it starts with the leader and um I always think of the terminology, so we think about vulnerability and that we're mirrors of each other. This is the way I, I believe this. If I'm vulnerable, I'm going to give someone else permission to be vulnerable. If I'm intimate, meaning into me you see, I allow you to see me, they're going to allow me to see them. Okay. Now, this may sound hokey in a corporate environment, and that's why I have such a passion for this right now, because I think... We're really in a climate where people's vulnerability is being tapped into and you're starting to see people grow and thrive and you're starting to see leaders exhale and realize, oh, I can be myself. I don't have to be this maybe person that I had before me. I can show up authentically, have fun at this and really influence people. So I would say once you show up, once you get vulnerable with somebody, where have you struggled? What are you afraid of? Um, then you'll start seeing that in them. And then that's when that opportunity happens. Really tapping into their authenticity. What are you really afraid of? I'm afraid to coach you because if I coach you and you push back on me, you may not like me. Guess what? I'm going to say that. I'm going to tell on myself. I'm afraid to do that. Now, let me just tell you, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, no way I wouldn't have said that. I was the leader. No way am I going to admit that I'm afraid to go to. But over time, I realized that the more vulnerable I am, the more I tell on myself, as I call it, um, the more the human being is steps up to the plate. Then they're willing to give you discretionary effort. They're willing to take risks and they enjoy it. And then you're getting productivity. Then you're seeing it on the other end as well. So it's a, it's a it's a relationship i guess i can say let me rewind that because i think you just dropped a really valuable <laughs> golden nugget right there and i want to make sure that enough attention enough due attention is being emphasized on that point you just made but if i'm hearing you right what you had said was that when you were vulnerable about the concerns that you have about giving feedback to your teammates when you say hey i I would like to tell you this, but my concern is that you might take this the wrong way. I want to be very transparent that this is to help you become even better than what you are. But I think I see more potential in you. And I think that right now you don't fully trust me. And I'd love to kind of tap into that. But I recognize that this may be something you may not want to hear. And um, I want to I want to just essentially let you know that I, I highly care about you. And I care about how you feel. But I want you to let you know that, like, I'm not coming at you negatively. I want to just unlock you and help you take yourself to the next level. If I'm hearing you right, it sounds like by being more vulnerable, and I just gave an example of that and I might have butchered it, but all I'm trying to say is that by showcasing your own fears, by, as you put it, telling on yourself, your likelihood of getting somebody else to accept the information that you're sharing their way is so much greater than saying, hey, you need to be doing this. Is that correct? Spot on. And, and a lot of times I call it the turbulence conversation. So, you know, you get on a plane and the, and the pilot says, you know, we're getting ready to hit some turbulence, you know, 
make sure your seat belts are on or whatever, and then you never get to the turbulence, or when you do, it's really not that bad. That's kind of what that, that that's how that happens too when I talk about any kind of critical, crucial conversations or during annual reviews or stuff. Look, I'm going to share some information with you that may upset you, right? And I don't want to upset you because I don't like the way I feel when I upset you. I don't like the way you feel either. So it's like I you give that turbulence conversation so that when you do get into the conversation, it's really not that bad because they know where it's coming from. They know where you're coming from, right? So, and I if we circle back around to how does that tie to gratitude? I, I am grateful for you. So because of that, I'm going to show you respect and be real with you, be vulnerable with you. Right? So it's, it's tied directly to gratitude. Let's talk about that a little bit more. How can we be more intentional about being grateful for our team and for our mentor? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in my experience, that shift happened for me when I got more present. So there was a lot of exercises and um, work that I did on myself as a leader to become more present with my team, with my individuals. Um, I was a high achiever, type A. I wanted to make a lot of money and work my way up the corporate ladder. And oftentimes I lost sight of what my individuals needed, what my team needed, how they were feeling, right? Um, didn't really get to see their blind spots because I wasn't present. So I started working a lot on myself in being present when I was with somebody, when I was with a team, I right? really looking at how they were responding to me. Were they asking me questions or were they not saying anything? That's a red flag right there. You know, are they comfortable to ask a question? Those are things I would look for, right? To really open up that vulnerability. And then in turn, once that relationship, have you ever noticed um, when you have a really, really good relationship with somebody, and this is a whole different conversation because you can have a, poor relationship as well but when you have a really good relationship with somebody you think of them it's easier to give gratitude you think of them at times when you could be grocery shopping and you could st I, i've stopped in the fruit section and sent a text I'm thinking about you i know that it's your son's birthday you know hope you have a great birthday bam two seconds on my way through the grocery store it's little things like that that go a long way but we get caught up in the minutia of performing and numbers and hiring and letting people go and the whole shebang that we miss the most important thing that we're there to influence people and to guide people you know i think channeling my inner tony robbins i think this is something i learned at one of his events was that when you have gratitude it's impossible to feel any negative feeling it's impossible to feel stress or anger or jealousy or sadness or being mad um the only feeling you can feel when you're grateful is happiness. Sure. And um, I know a lot of executives right now, I would imagine, are going through things that are stressful. There's a lot of change going on. The world is a crazy place right now. Um, and it almost sounds like, if I'm hearing you right, if we can set, I'm also a big fan of Atomic Habits, of setting a daily just intention on doing something that's aligned with gratitude, we can make ourselves substantially ha happier, healthier, and our teams just in and our cultures are much more exciting and, and beneficial environment to be in because we feel acknowledged and seen and observed and 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 credited for for the work that we're doing absolutely and that's part of a, a book that i'm writing right now part of that is for executives to stop and say that was that's one of the anchors of compassionate leadership is how am i showing gratitude on a daily basis in my environment with my team with my colleagues and, be, and as you sit down at either when you wake up in the morning or when you sit down at your desk before everything starts wreaking havoc, right? You sit down at your desk and on your calendar, you have set aside 10 minutes. I was going to say 20, but I'll give you 10, 10 minutes, okay? Where all you're doing is really just sitting there and thinking to yourself, how can I show my gratitude today with the people I work with? Susie, I know she's struggling at home. A quick note to her. Um, John, um, he's doing really well. And he's kind of a newer, newer um, employee. I'm going to have lunch with this person. Or just three things each day. And it changes the course of how you show up and how you influence um, and how you feel, right? And it's 10 minutes, 10 minutes every morning. Wow. That's a great habit to get into. Living is really powerful. 
Let's talk about the other side of it, receiving mm -hmm. gratitude. How can we effectively receive gratitude as leaders? How can we, yeah, how can we effectively receive gratitude as leaders? I want to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. Okay, I'll share because I'm learning right now. Um, I love to give recognition. It's hard to re for me to receive recognition. Um, I'm having a visual response right now because I can remember a time about probably 12 years ago, and I had won an award, and I was in front of about 3,000 people, so I went out to get my award, and I was ready to just grab the reward, grab the award, and get off the stage. <laughs> and uh, one of my mentors was up there on stage, and then he kind of grabbed my hand, and he handed me a microphone, and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to speak. And he said, stop for me, he whispered in my ear, and he says, exhale, breathe for a second. I want you to look around at all these people that are clapping for you. And he stopped me in the middle of this huge award ceremony. And I literally just scanned the, and I felt just such gratitude that, and then he, he basically said to me, if you don't receive this, you're not honoring them. You've got to let them give you. You've got to be able to receive that as well as you give. So I think, you know, that was one thing that I will always remember. And I also know that it starts with me. So I've done a lot of transformational work myself, and I also coach and train transformational leadership, that is self-talk creates that. So if I learn to have compassion for myself and acknowledge what I do and to love what I have, then I'll be able to receive it a little bit better. So really paying attention to that self-talk has helped being able to receive gratitude as well. Does that make sense? It makes a ton of sense. It makes me think of presence. Like the word that I keep thinking of that comes to mind when you share that story is the word presence. It seems that the bad way to accept gratitude is they'll brush it off like as if it doesn't exist and not to fully acknowledge it. And the best way to is to just take a moment, recognize what this other person is doing or what these other people are doing for you take a breath and take it in and say thank you and it means a lot and it almost makes you want to cry because you're like shoot all these people that i'm so grateful for when they reciprocate or when they share that back with me it just makes me feel like holy smokes like i'm, I'm doing something meaningful here i'm doing something rewarding and that's uh an incredible feeling yeah yeah and i had somebody ask me one time why is it so hard for you to receive and accept gratitude and recognition and we had a great conversation around it. So I would, I would actually tee that up as well. Ask. Ask yourself, why is it so hard? There's a reason. Usually it comes from a self-worth or not believing that you're, you're good enough to, to have it or to see it. Um, and once you really stand in that power, then you're really capable of influencing and leading and, and going well beyond where you are now. So... I think I asked this question earlier, but I want to re-ask it from a leadership perspective and from a culture perspective. I, the question was, why is gratitude important? But really, the, the follow-on to that is, what can we expect, what can we anticipate if we start building a more grateful company culture? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, when it starts with us, so it's a mirror, you're going to start seeing everyone around you appreciating the ordinary moments, right? And I think there's a lot to say for that. Um, and from appreciation comes abundance, right? So the opposite of abundance is scarcity. When we work out of scarcity, we work in fear. And so you have people that aren't taking risks, that aren't giving you discretionary effort, that are afraid every time they turn around to do something or be creative or what have you. Um, they're in fear, right? So the opposite of that scarcity is abundance. And what comes from that, cre uh, that gratitude is just abundance. People learning, people growing, people taking risks. It's a big deal. Um, I, I recall um, several women who said they did not want to be leaders when I was at my other company and simply stepping into gratitude and mentoring. So I took them under my wing and I really spent time with them. Time that I thought I didn't have, but time. And we increased women in leadership by almost 30%. Because they learned how to embrace what it meant to be a leader and influence and be that versus do, 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 do. They thought they didn't have time to do it. They couldn't do it, right? So there's a lot that can happen when you 
when you're in gratitude and the culture is in gratitude, it's, um, it's pretty magnetic. And, you know, this makes me think of, it has to start with everybody that's watching this. It has to start with the leadership first. And that sets the tone for the entire company culture because it makes me think of, uh, we did a, uh, a, a lunch and learn on unconscious bias and a mentoring relationship a few months ago. And uh, one of the things that I learned was this, this component of power dynamics. As the leaders in our company, we probably rarely feel power dynamics in our company. We probably rarely feel like, oh, should I be focused on something during this conversation? Should I be like consciously aware of X, Y, Z, th something going on? I know I'm definitely guilty of this. I don't feel those things. I just go into meetings and it just, I treat it like every other day. Um, but the people that work for me, I mean, I know because I've also worked for other people where you feel those power dynamics. You feel like, okay, I need to act in this certain way in front of this other person. And I've felt when I was working for somebody else, when they were vulnerable with me, when they were grateful for me, it gave me so much, it, it gave me not, not only so much happiness, but also the permission to reciprocate. And that is what creates a culture that's inviting, just like what you had said, a, a culture of scarcity versus abundance. It creates a culture of abundance. And so as the leader, don't look towards anybody else to be start being grateful it has to start with you all that are watching this right now so i guess what i'd love to ask a question to all of our leaders watching this what is something small that you can commit to i talked a little bit about atomic habits before but is there something you can do on a daily basis that gets you more intentionally focused about gratitude um in your work environment i don't know write it down you know set an intention of doing that because i think that can be so helpful what are your thoughts on that laura Oh, without a doubt. And, you know, it's interesting. I, I hear all the time individuals at home, you know, with their family and personal life, they'll think, I get up in the morning, and what I do, I do three goals in the morning, and I do three things I'm grateful for, right? Um, but, but to think, when I was in corporate, if I could go back, um, I didn't do a whole lot of that, like, intentionally every morning with my environment. You know, whether it be the people that I was leading or whether it may be, you know, associates or colleagues that I worked with, right? I, I didn't think that way for some, I was so driven. I wanted to produce and I wanted to work my way up the ladder. And I, I was, it was, I feel horrible saying that. That's what my focus was. And um, the more we can bring that into corporate, that um, idea of what are you grateful for? I'll give you an example, something that a company did about a month ago that I was working with, which was phenomenal. They did that every morning with their team, and their team posted it on a board in the office. So whenever they walked by, they saw what each individual was most grateful for for that day. And I thought, that's phenomenal. That's creating a culture of gratitude. And it's saying, this is important to us, and you matter, right? So something like that even to create a culture. Um, one thing I do now, being at home, a lot of us are at home, right, leading teams from afar virtually, is uh, every morning I get up with my cup of coffee, I get on LinkedIn, and I write a recommendation for somebody. I don't tell them. It's kind of cool getting it back. They're like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. Um, and just my experience of them and working with them. Um, there's the kudos function on LinkedIn as well. Kudos. I want to recognize um, Mike Johnson for his enthusiasm and motivation. Just really cool little things that go so far with the team. So those are a couple things I would recommend even. Wink, wink. That seems like a tip that you <laughs> all can use with your teams. Um, give them a letter of a rec on LinkedIn. It takes, what, five minutes to do? You might think to yourself, like, oh, I don't really post that type of stuff, or I don't really have the time. It's like if you want to build a culture of gratitude, you'll make the time because that ultimately can mean so much to somebody else. It truly doesn't take too much time at all. It can really mean the difference in somebody else's work, especially when they're not expecting it. That's what's so critical. When they're not expecting it, really reinforces their appreciation of you because of how much you appreciated them. Yeah, yeah. So when is the right time to give gratitude? I think sometimes leaders might think to themselves like, oh, we've got annual reviews. I'll show my gratitude in the annual review. We'll figure it out then. When is actually the right time to give your gratitude? You know what came to mind when you asked me that question just now? You fix the roof when the sun's shining, not when it's raining. 
any time, any time is, is time to give gratitude. In fact, it's about consistency, really. It's more about consistency than it is about when. And oftentimes I give gratitude at times where I wouldn't at least expect it. Have you ever picked up a book or you've gone to the store or you kind of going for a walk or what have you and all of a sudden come, someone comes across your mind? That's the time, you know. So I, that's a hard question to, um, to answer because I think if someone's wondering when the right time is, the question would be, why do you wonder when the right time is? That would be the question I would ask to, to understand it a little more. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It, <laughs> immediately, when you said, like, every time's the right time to wear it, it makes me think of, and maybe I'm, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying here, but I, when I was younger, I used to watch, when I was a, a child, I used to watch a TV show called SpongeBob, and SpongeBob had this song about when the best time it was to wear a striped sweater, and the answer is all the time. <laughs> um, exactly. The best time to give gratitude is all the time. It just, really reinforces a lot of things. One thing I do, because it will pop up in my head randomly, but sometimes I'll be driving. I'm like, okay, I can't like text somebody while I'm you know, driving right now. But what I'll do is I will every morning have like a little 10 minute gratitude session where I'll just close my eyes, smile, which will do some neuro linguistic programming, forcing me to be happier and think about things and people that I'm grateful for. And then I started taking some action after that, sending them a text, just whoever comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I think when, when they're least expecting, it is probably the most um, special. Absolutely. So public versus private gratitude, what are your thoughts on that? When is the right time to give public gratitude? When is the right time to give private gratitude? I would say the answer is it really depends on the person. I think that there's, there's value in both, for sure. Um, some people don't like that recognition. Some people sincerely were like, I do not like it. And I've had individuals where I've, I've trial and error, I went there anyway, and they were very clear. There was no change in it. There was no like, oh, I didn't like it, but thank you so much. It was like, I told you I didn't like that. I'm like, okay. So I learned, right? So really understanding how people like to be recognized. Like you mentioned a little like, like, like love language type thing. Like what is there? What's the way they like to be recognized? How do they appreciate that, right? So I would say that first, really understanding the person. But for the most part, even me, I'll, I'll use me as an example. I don't like the recognition, but I love it. Does that make sense? So I don't, I don't like to be standing there and be like, oh, my gosh, it's kind of uncomfortable, and I turn red. And whole shebang. But I leave feeling so good. Um, so a lot of times as a leader, I'll give recognition or gratitude um, publicly because I think uh, it, it shows my team and that individual that it's not about me. It's about you. And, and I recognize you, I see you, and I want everybody else to see how great you are and what you've done or, or a certain skill or competency, right? Um, and then there's a lot of value in one-on-one -on -one because then you've got the, you know, you've got the sincerity with the body language and you're looking someone in the eye and you're there and it's a very, um, it's a, it could be a very pivotal moment in someone's career, uh, you know, so it depends. That makes a lot of sense. Laura, this has been an awesome lunch and learn. I think gratitude is extremely powerful and I think it really helps shed some amazing light into how we can be but more have more gratitude as leaders within our company cultures. Thank you so much for sharing that. How can our executives learn more about you and your work? Yes, so uh, anchored elements coaching and training dot com. Uh, my number is three three seven seven three nine. 7415. So reach out any executive coaching, corporate training, and I also do transformational leadership. So um, reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, this was a great lunch and learn. Thank you all for being here. Laura, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. See ya.